What's up guys? We are out filming another adventure right now, but in the video you're about to see, we show you how to harvest stone crab claws, how to clean stone crab claws, and how to eat stone crab claws. This is Stone Crab Claws Catch Clean Cook. What's up everybody? Dar Sizzle here of course, and today is a beautiful day inshore saltwater fishing. The weekend is about to begin. We just put a bunch of bait in our stone crab traps three days ago. It's time to check the traps. We never get to do it this soon, so I'm really curious to see. We've already pulled the first one into the boat. Let's open it together and see what we've got. Had plenty of carcasses, just the wahoo carcass and stuff we've had sitting in our freezer. Oh baby, look at the size of those claws. Oh my gosh, we hit the mother load. And look, some of the baits not even decayed yet. They're still eating it. Wow, these are beasts huge stone crab claws. I'm so excited. At our last pull, we barely got any. This time we scored so far. Yes. Whoa, nice job, Dar Sizzle. If you guys are new to the channel, I'm Puddin. That's Darcy, of course, also known as Dar Sizzle. We're the fishing couple down here in Florida living our dreams. Oh, baby. Whoa, that's a monster, baby. Big claws on these guys. We just had cold fronts come through too, and I really think that helps move these stone crabs inshore. Right. We always tell you guys that crabbing is a little bit like fishing. You gotta try different things. And we just came out here after two days of setting our traps. Uh, just to see how it would yeah, go, like, and it's really paying off so far. Yeah, like two to three days. Break that leg off, Dar Sizzle. Yep. Now, before you guys get an uproar, we have all these crabbing videos. We do it all the time, all the how-tos and everything. So check those out. We're just gonna breeze through it today a little bit and see what happens. But are you allowed to keep both claws here in Florida? We only keep one. Yep. Bug out, and then you throw the crab back in. Claw grows back, and it's a renewable resource. We got four claws out of that haul, all of them extra large size claws, which would be worth a couple hundred dollars in a restaurant, maybe like 150 bucks, 100 bucks. Woohoo! I'm excited. I don't want to get my hopes up too much because we still got a lot more traps to check, and that's just one. And it's so interesting because every trap you go to on the same day, one might be loaded, one might have none, so you just never know what to expect. It's so much fun. Second trap coming up. We got one. And the clown knife fish is in here. <laughs> one. I don't think he's going to keep, but we're going to see. You can check it real fast just to show it on camera. All right. He's going to be yeah, a little yeah, too check short. It, check it with this thing here. Yep. Too short. Yeah, it's a little short and just this is a female. Yep. What is this thing called again? A the carapace? Abdomen. No, no. The carapace is this. Oh. You messed that last. The carapace. This is the abdomen, I guess. There's some, another word for this. Yeah. I forgot, but. Yeah. Pretty little female. That's unfortunate, but. That's why every trap is different. You saw the other one was loaded. This one just had one and we still got plenty of bait in there. So I'm gonna put a couple more in there, redrop. Oh, I see something. Okay. It's just interesting checking our traps while, you know, about a little more than 48 hours from the last time we dropped them and put baits in the water. And it's interesting to check them because there's still bait in every single one of these traps, but we're catching crabs which is a good thing. And you guys are asking me too about these zip ties. I like to put these zip ties on. It's just an added sense of security for me, mainly so I know if somebody opened my trap. If they open my trap, they gotta break my zip tie off. And then that way I know it was messed with. Sometimes they leave the, the tops open or sometimes they will close them. Um, wow, we got a nice haul in here. Not as big as the first ones, but we got four. Four claws, four crabs. I don't know if they're gonna keep, but we're gonna find out. Oh my gosh. I see a big trap. I see a big one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Guys, get ready, get ready. I'm so excited. Wow, it's just so interesting when you go from trap to trap and what's inside. Whoa, that's a lot for our waters. We're not in the Keys. You can see almost all the baits are gone. There's a baby. Wow, seven, no, six. No, seven, <laughs> I can't count. Holy crap, see that? The last two were barely anything. I didn't get any keepers in the last trap, even though there was four crabs. Now we got a lot of keepers in this one. Stoked. All right, here's one. Let's measure that one. 
be real close. Probably not going to keep. Just a millimeter short. Mm -hmm. <laughs> going home. I'm going to keep it. I'll just show you how to break a claw real quick. This one has a keeper claw. When they have another claw, you gotta fold it into their body so that way that claw or pincher can't affect you or hurt you. And then you just kind of hold on to them like so. And it's kind of a little bit of a trick here and you wanna break it clean because you want them to survive. And I just kind of broke it off like downward motion and out a little bit. And you can see this claw is still moving a little bit. But clean cut like that, that he's going to survive. He's going to rejuvenate another claw. That's why it's a renewable resource. And this guy will be fine. He's got another claw to eat. And we got a claw for ourselves. Oh yeah, I also wanted to mention the fact about my stone crab necklaces right here. Each one is individual and unique because every stone crab has a unique claw, just like our, our uh, fingerprints. Each person has a different fingerprint. So all different sizes available and I make necklaces and keychains with them. Check them out on the website if you're interested in your own custom crab claw necklace made by me. Goodness. Get Ooh. ready. Papa's hungry, baby. Papa's hungry. Nice job. Oh my goodness gracious. Look at that claw. Holy crap, dude. That's bigger than my hand. Look at that thing. Massive. And it's just interesting too, because sometimes these claws, these crushers aren't very used very often, but this guy, he's been using that crusher claw. It's, all the, uh, cr the shell is crushed. You can just see he's been using it to crush crustaceans. Maybe Brian can get a close up once I break it off. But that is considered a jumbo claw in restaurants. That is what people want to go eat when you come down here to South Florida or any fresh stone crab claw net restaurant. Just living the dream out here, catching giants. <laughs> And he's a massive, that's a massive body on this guy. That's about as big as they get, maybe a little bigger. That their claws are basically bigger than their bodies. Insane. Perfect break. Look at that thing. So insane, so insane. You only get like these in the Florida Keys, never up here, so I'm just blessed letting them go. You guys know how nerdy I am, but you know, it's super cool just showing you the actual circle of life out here, following our dream just eating this delicious wahoo and sharing it with our friends and family and then reusing the carcass to catch giant claws like this guy. And then we feed ourselves with some more beautiful stone crabs. Just blessed and really appreciate y'all watching this video. Going overboard and look, there was even a sea urchin on the trap trying to get in there to eat the fresh bait. Going home. We are back at the house now, guys, and it's time for the cleaning portion of this video. And I'm not gonna need a Smith blade like I always have when I'm cleaning the stuff we catch, seafood and whatnot. Today, the cleaning process is pretty easy. I'm sure a lot of you guys don't do this, but I like to do it, and my dad taught me this to do this too. So it's just um, a ritual of mine. All you really need are bottle brushes, and I like a stiff, firm bottle brush here to uh, clean these crab claws. And so this is before they are cooked. Here's the biggest one of the day. We got about a dozen, which is not bad for around here. We're not in the Florida Keys, but that is a massive claw. And that piece is what we use for the necklaces. You can see that there. And each one is unique. We sell the jumbo ones too. So it's on the website, everything's down below. So turn on the water. And also what I was saying before, maybe Brian can film this after the fact, but um, Right here, up at the upper tip of the claw, right before, after the point, there is like a fingerprint on every single claw. And this one is his original claw. All of the actual lines here are completely not broken. They're straight lines. And if it was a regrow, they would be broken lines. Brian can zoom in on that later and you can actually see the lines. And each crab claw has a different line, which is really cool. It makes them all unique, just like our fingerprints. Now, all I really do, you see all this dirt here? When you crack open the claw, that's gonna end up in your meat. You don't wanna eat that. So I've seen a lot of people in past clean cook videos on YouTube and I just see all that dirt around and it's just no bueno. So I like to clean it up real quick. Just hit it with the bottle brush, it comes right off. Even these crevices just comes out. Even here in the corner, cause they live on the bottom, they're all around the dirt 24 seven. So they just get collect dirt over time. You just clean it up real quick, just like I'm doing here. With the running water and this guy is ready to cook and sometimes when you're cleaning them too they start to move which is so weird their little sensations i guess and the nerves still move so that's one that one's done let me get myself a plate so we're going to finish off the rest brian's going to help me and then it's going to be time to cook these suckers you can see that one's real dirty 
Nice job cleaning those clothes, I said, and welcome to another edition of Cooking with Puddin. <laughs> this is really Darcy's deal, cooking these crabs. She gets really excited about it. But before we get to the cooking part of the crabs, I'm gonna, we're gonna do the merch real quick, don't worry. All right, first thing we got, we got fresh water. We got salt water calendars. These have all your favorite, biggest catches of the year. We got the bracelets. Yes. <laughs> Here, this is just a handful that I tied a short while ago. All different colors and sizes, adult and child sizes available. I'm wearing some too. Don't forget about the nautical keychains. I make a handful of different kinds, whale tails and all that good stuff. Yes, and we got the silver bracelets, silver uh, necklaces, Shark and even individual claws for the necklaces. These are from these claws. Yes. Handmade. All right, that's good. Out of the way. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much for standing by for that. All right, let's cook. Now. We've got the claws. Here's what we got prepared. We got a big bowl of ice water. Yes. Right, Sizzle? Cold water with ice. A little bowl so we can see it. He's pushing it. me out of the frame. Now he's I pulling know, me I in. Know. In and out, in and out. Yes, so we have prepared a cold water, basically a cold bowl full of cold water and ice. I just said that. <laughs> Why are you telling me? You said <laughs> right, Sizzle? All right, here's, okay. here's what right. we got. We got. Right. we got the bowl of water. We got some boiling water. Got cold water, boiling water, and we divided the claws into two sizes, uh, the small ones and the big ones. Yes. Because they're going to cook at different rates. You don't want to mess this up because they're delicious. Yes. So we're going to cook the bigs together and the smalls. Don't forget the key ingredient. Key ingredient is vinegar. White distilled vinegar. And we're going to put some of this in here. That, that prevents, what we're trying to avoid here, guys, is not only we're trying to cook it properly, but we're trying to avoid the claws or the meat in the claws from sticking to the shell. All right? That, you don't want that to happen. So how much I put in here? You don't need a lot. Splash. A splash of that Good. in there, okay? So Let all the, the methods Darcy uses, she likes to have the water boil all the time. Well, it's got to come back up. Yeah, yeah. That distilled water. So all the all these things we're going to do is going to help you to avoid the meat sticking to the claw. The first thing you do is when you get the claw off the crab, you put it in one of these little trays. In your cooler, you don't let it actually touch the ice, right, Dar Sizzle? Right. Right. All right. And then you're gonna cook them like this. We're gonna cook the little ones for three minutes, the big ones for five minutes, and then we're gonna put them right into cold water, and that's so that they stop cooking. All right. Now we got exactly. the water back up. Let's put them in. Exactly. And before yeah. I put it in really quick, I just want to show you something pretty cool. You can see the difference between these two claws right here. That's a crusher claw with a really thin um, upper point there, and then this one's a crusher claw. You can tell the difference. But yes. Some of you guys in the last crab claw video asked about left and right-handed crabs. The crusher claw is their main claw, so that would be a right-handed crab. This one was a left-handed crab, so pretty cool that there are left and right-handed crabs out there, and I'm left-handed, so the, the, we got a special one. <laughs> <laughs> left hand's always special. All, all right. right, so we're gonna drop these in there, let the water come back to a boil, and get them all in, and then cook them for about four or five minutes, so here we go. Now we're gonna do five minutes, take those out, Make sure you guys stay till the end because I'm going to tell you my patented method of cracking the claws in the most efficient manner. And into the cold water. All right, now I'm just going to put the little ones in and that's really it. Pretty simple. All right, guys, they're all done and ready to eat. You can see we've got a big pile of beautiful claws here. I don't, God knows how much these would cost in the store, but I'm going to show you my patented Pudding way of how to clean them or how to crack them and eat them. All right. So I'm gonna take uh, I think a, a medium one. So Darcy doesn't yell at me. Now you can see there's three, there's two knuckles. One, two, and then a, really the claw, of the hand. Usually you can break this part off, and you'll get the meat right out. So you don't gotta smash it. Okay. And you can eat that. Delicious job. And you can put butter or that crab mustard on these. I eat them just like this. All right. Now. You're going to take this, and I'm not sure which way is better, but put it down like this, and you're going to use a paper towel over it, and you can just use a regular table knife. And I'm going to give it one hit. You don't want to hit it excessive times. You want to hit it once, and that's it. Otherwise, you're going to make it a million tiny pieces of shell, and you're going to get shell in your mouth. So just give it one hit. That was just on that knuckle. And then you can use your hands. See how that comes apart pretty well? And I can eat that. Delicious. Now, I'm gonna eat this claw, and I'm gonna hit it right here, one time. There we go. Boom, pull this off. You can do a little of this by hand. Show it. 
You see? Now, you got this big piece of meat and there's a piece of cartilage in the middle. So if you did a good job, this will come right off. You see that? We did a good job. Mmm. And I just got myself a big piece of meat. Or you can just do this. And you look like a chicken wing, all right? And then you can crack this. There's a couple little teeny pieces in here. You can eat those or not. You can get that piece out. And now Darcy is gonna take this and make a crab claw necklace out of it. And that's it, see how easy? All right, Darcy, that was an excellent catch and cook and those crabs are delicious. Yeah. Good job. I honestly need to go buy like more of that stone crab uh, mustard sauce. It's good. delicious. Really but good. honestly, fresh is just as good. It doesn't need anything. I like eat them Brian just said. like that all the time. Yeah, like Brian said, it's delicious. So uh, glad you hope you guys enjoyed that episode. This is really one of the, honestly, this is one of the greatest things. I'm not a huge fan, I gotta tell you. But it's one of the greatest things you can really do with your family. You get out there, you don't gotta worry about the weather. The yep. kids aren't gonna be thrown up on the side of the boat. You can make the traps together. It's like a Girl Scout or Boy Scout thing almost, you know? Yeah. You can go out there and check the traps and learn about the sea and conservation. Right. It's okay. cheap, you don't gotta burn a lot of gas. It's perfect, it's really and great. Sometimes you, know, and then sometimes really you get rewarded with delicious fresh seafood that you don't have to go buy at a restaurant for a super crazy amount of money. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Yes. If you have any questions or comments, please put it down in the comments below the video, of course. Don't forget about old Darcy's gear and merchandise yep. for the we holidays. We appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you for all the it's orders. You guys are slamming us, but it's a good thing. We like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep um, following along, and until our next adventure, follow, follow your dreams, dreams and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching.